Hey there, welcome to the Astro Psyche. This is your weekly astrology for May 1st through the 7th. So we'll talk about Mercury retrograde, updates, our final eclipse in Scorpio in the season, and some other things that are happening in the sky as well. My name is Shauna McGrath. I'm an astrologer and I'm excited to share the astrology of this week with you so that you can make the most out of this time. So at the very beginning of the week, we have an important uh, touch point with Mercury retrograde. So Mercury has been retrograde for the last uh, week-ish or so. It's stationed retrograde on the 21st of April. And um, essentially, Mercury retrograde is a time where um, our thought process and our communication process, our thinking mind, is retrospective and sort of internalized to a certain extent. Uh, so this is a time where we can be looking back on the past or putting our attention into doing things that maybe we've been meaning to do or to tie up or to reassess for some time. So Mercury is a retrograde in that retrograde period until May 14th. Um, and what's important this week is that uh, in the middle of Mercury retrogrades process at the midpoint is when Mercury and the Sun come together in the Zodiac. And so that's happening on Monday this week. Mercury and the Sun are coming together at the same point in Taurus. And this is a point where there is a potential for a, a massive amount of clarity and insight and um, this is called, uh, typically in astrology terms, it's called um, Mercury being in the heart or in the chariot. Um, and I, when I was thinking about this week, I was thinking it's like there's, you're like in the heart of clarity, like you get to the heart of the issue. And so, yes, we're still in the Mercury retrograde period where um, there's more introspection and reflection on things and maybe um, thinking about how to do things better. And Monday, especially Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, may be a time where you have an insight. And sometimes these things are subtle, but they can be very profound. So I would pay attention to that. That can come through literally through an awareness. It can also come through via a dream or a synchronicity or um, more literally a message or communication that you get from someone. So really be paying attention to that and uh, use your symbolic thinking as much as you can because that really helps us tap into this Mercury retrograde period. Now, the other thing that's happening this week is that we will have a full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. This is exact on Friday, May 5th at 10.34 a.m. Pacific time. And so... Eclipses, like I spoke about um, the last couple of weeks, they're sort of like this portal opening to the other world. Uh, this portal opening to uh, new opportunities to come into your life and then old things to fall away. So it can be a time of rapid change and transition. It can also feel very unstable. Now, my sense is that this eclipse will feel a bit less intense than the one that we had a couple of weeks ago. The last one that we had was on the 19th of April. That was a solar eclipse in Aries. And that was much closer to the node. And the node is um, a point in the sky that sort of initiates our eclipses. So uh, this one in Scorpio, yes, it's in Scorpio, um, which is known to be particularly emotionally intense. Um, but I feel like as far as eclipses go, it's a bit softer. Um, now, I think it's kind of like this very interesting flavor, though, because it's still an eclipse. So it's still um, it's still emphasizing uh, the themes around a full moon in Scorpio. So full moon is where things come into our awareness. They come into consciousness. They break through from being unconscious or running in the background, something that we're not aware of, to something that, that we either become aware of or that we need to confront or deal with or celebrate. Full moon is also about celebrations. Um, 
And this being in the sign of Scorpio, Scorpio is about integrity. It's about being ruthless, ruthlessly honest um, and really getting into the, the deep nitty gritty, um, the true authentic, the true authentic matter of things. Uh, Scorpio has themes around passion and deep feeling. And Scorpio benefits from taking on a psychological perspective as well. So like really understanding the dynamics of what's happening. Uh, and that can sometimes be challenging. Um, it can be challenging to, uh, to be really honest with yourself or with others about what is actually happening here. And so I think from that perspective, full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio, yes, can be challenging. Um, but I think that we can look at it as aligning with our integrity and being really honest with ourselves while we're in this state of flux also and acknowledging that when we have an eclipse, when we have Mercury retrograde, things are in flux. There's a lot that's changing and this is a season. It's not uh, something that is forever. It's not that um, it's not that you're doing anything wrong. Uh, if something isn't working quite right, it's um, if things feel like they're not flowing, then it's more about pulling back and slowing down and looking at the big themes and the patterns and where you're being guided. Now, the other piece of this too is that um, we're having this Mercury retrograde in Taurus and we're having this lunar eclipse in Scorpio, which is opposite Taurus, uh, which connects us in with Uranus, Uranus and Taurus. And Uranus is about um, the unexpected. It's about surprises, radical changes. It's about um, something happening where you're like, whoa, I had no idea. I couldn't have planned for this thing. And it's also about doing things in, a, in an unconventional way that is uh, different than the social norm or that's maybe different than your norm. And so like all like this whole mixture, there's um, a strong feeling of possibly of insecurity, of instability, of like this really like not knowing what is happening. And so again, um, really good for us all to slow down and to notice what's happening and to take action when we feel a when we feel a secure steady confidence in where we're going and that 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 is our anchor uh, now the other piece of what's happening this week uh, also mirrors these themes around ambiguity and uncertainty uh, so we have Venus in Gemini making a square to Neptune. And so Venus is about relationships, beauty, aesthetics, uh, sexuality, sensuality, love, um, all of the things that we love, right? Uh, so when Venus makes a square to Neptune, it can mean that there's a lack of clarity or things are sort of ambiguous around maybe around relational dynamics or partnerships um, or and this can be friendships partnership business partnerships romantic etc any way that we relationally connect with others that there's something that's a little bit unclear um, and Neptune can be very spiritual there can be like a uh, sort of like an otherworldly connection that that feels very nice um but this being in a square it tells me that there's something that's maybe a little bit challenging about this uh this uncertainty because neptune tends to blur the lines blur the boundaries and so there's like something here that's not clear um and whenever we have neptune making an aspect like this to a personal planet it tells us to 
again, similar, slow down and sort of like wait and not jump into anything because we don't have all of the facts yet. We don't have all of the details and they will be revealed. Um, but we just, we need time and space, Neptune, to allow for things to become clear. Now, my sense is that this will happen. Uh, let's see, when does this happen? Um, Sunday when Venus moves into Cancer. And so that will uh, sort of mark the ending of that aspect of Venus-Neptune. So I think when Venus moves into Cancer, there will, there will be more um, clarity and sort of like a security around whatever it was that was uncertain, um, especially around relational dynamics this week. So uh, let's... Pull some cards for you. Um, so yeah, I wonder how your Mercury retrograde slash eclipse experience has been. Uh, what you've noticed, I think that each time is different because we have, um, you know, so many different combinations going on in one time. So any like each Mercury retrograde, each eclipse period, it's going to be, uh, it's like one ingredient in the soup of life. Okay. So I'm pulling from the wild unknown tarot today. Okay. Ooh, this is good. Okay, so I pulled the Father of Swords. Um, this is also the King of Swords in this deck, and it has this very serious owl on it uh, with a rainbow-colored sword sort of crossing the owl's shoulder and, and chest. Um, so this card, and I pulled this card reversed. So this card to me coming up in reversed is about maybe like a little bit of insecurity about something, um, an insecurity in, uh, in being bold. I'm really drawn to the red in the sword here too. So like, uh, and maybe like, and maybe it's not insecurity. Maybe it's just like not wanting necessarily to step in and do the thing or say the thing or um yeah it's kind of like a hesitancy here and that's not bad I just you know there's something there around maybe wanting to but maybe it's not the right time kind of like what we've been talking about uh now the second card is the two of swords and the Two of Swords is about making decisions. It's so funny. Oh my gosh, this looks like a an eclipse on here, doesn't it? The little symbol. Uh, so Two of Swords is about making a decision. And uh, in the traditional uh, Smith Waite deck, there's an image of a person that has a blindfold on and they have two swords that they're crossing. And so this card is a reminder to use your intuition like yes use logic but there's there's an intuitive gut check or an intuitive read here that that you want to tap into when you're making a decision or making decisions in general this is a reminder that um the logical answer is not always necessarily uh what you want to rest on you want to make sure that that you're listening that you're listening to your inner voice and um it's also a reminder to do meditation practices or mindfulness practices or anything that helps you tap into that quiet inner voice uh, now the third card is the high priestess uh, so this card is all about um the unknown the mysteries this card reminds us that there is more at work that there there's so much that we don't know and that we can't see how things are going to lay out in the future um and it's a reminder to trust the process and to like this is also a, a strong theme around intuition to 
Um, the High Priestess is about knowing that you'll never really know all of the answers to everything and knowing that at the same time there are ways in which we can tap into the unseen energy and that we can create a system of communication with, um, with spirit, with our guides, with our ancestors, and that that will always be somewhat elusive, but that the more that we practice these things, the more that we listen to our intuition, the stronger that connection becomes. Uh, so if I were looking at this as like a whole spread, there's kind of like something that like, it's like a decision point, but it feels sort of unclear. And it's like, like this feels very much like tapping into what we were saying about the Venus Neptune, Mercury retrograde eclipses. It's like there's something here bigger that it's like you don't have the whole master plan yet. And so this is not necessarily a time about just charging forward. This is like really sit with it and think about it and feel into feel into where you're going and how you're taking action. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed this. If you resonate with me and my work, I would love to do an astrology reading for you. You can find out more about that on my website. Um, and I have lots of other offerings that I'll put in the description. Um, I have my thesis that's published on Amazon. Um, I am teaching a local yoga class, Yoga with Reiki and Astrology here in San Diego. If you're local, I would love to see you. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm wishing you a super lovely week. I hope that it is as easy and effortless and joyful as possible. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.